العليا وسرة البطحاء ومصابيه الظلماء وينابي الحكمة and almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him from the lineal tree of prophets from the flame of light from the forehead of greatness from the best part of the valley of al ba'tha from the lamps for darkness and from the sources of wisdom and hikmah and then he says tabibun dawarun bi tibb qad ahkama marahima wa ahma mawsima yada dhalika haythu al hajatu ilay min qulubin aman wa adanin sum wa al sinatin bukm متتبع بدوائه مواضع الغفلة ومواطن الحيرة لم يستضيئوا بأدواء الحكمة that continues but now this is the part which I would like to brothers draw your attention to it where after giving background of the prophet Imam Ali says that Allah chosen Prophet from the most beautiful, pure background. He is coming from the tree of the Prophets. He is coming from the series of those who were lamps of guidance in the darkness of ignorance and misguidance. Connects him to a chain of guidance of anbiya of prophets one after other salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim ajma'in and then he speaks about himself when he says tabibun dawarun bi tibb i don't know what can define prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam more beautiful than this sentence of ali tabibun dawarun bi tibb ali says that prophet was like a roaming physician tabibun dawarun bi tibb a roaming physician who has set ready marahima ointments you know and also heated his instruments you know just to draw your attention imam ali calls prophet doctor physician who what is doctor what is the role of physician you know something to really think about it doctor and physician is somebody who is providing treatment to ailments to diseases to challenges in your body and imam ali is saying that prophet was a tabib was a physician was a doctor who was doctor providing treatment for whole humanity not ailments of the body but ailments of humanity as human being there is spiritual problems and diseases and challenges their social political ethical moral ailments and challenges and diseases tabibun prophet is a doctor prophet is a physician dawarun this quality is very important normally 
Doctors are sitting in their practice, in their rooms, in their clinics, in their hospitals, and patients go and offer them that I got this problem, I am sick, I am not feeling well, please help me out. And then doctor, of course, checks you and provides you with treatment. But in case of the Prophet, Amir al muminin Imam Ali says, no, he is not a doctor and a physician who is sitting in his room and waiting for patients to come. No, he is the one who goes behind the patients. Patients don't come to him. He goes to the patients. Now, this is really important. That's what Quran, when defines Prophet says, what Quran says, Azizun, Azizun, he is very dear to you. Min an fusekum, from yourself, somebody who has too much pain for you. You know, doctor only feels pain of a patient when patient comes. But prophet is a doctor and a physician before even patient comes to him and explains his problem and difficulties and hardship. He feels his pain, his suffering, his diseases, his ailments. And therefore, he runs to the patients, Tabibun Dawarun Bithibbe, who is moving around, roaming around with his medicine. This is really the most beautiful quality of the Prophet and how he was inclined toward addressing the ailments, the ailments, the diseases, the problems and the challenges of the people. They themselves, in other words, not didn't know that they are sick. But he reaches to them and he tries to treat them. Thabibun Dawarun Bithibbe. And then he says, he prepares his treatment beautifully. And he says that he got two types and two methods of treatment. Number one, number one, is ointment. He prepares his ointment. So wherever it is hurt, wherever it is problematic, he places ointment there. But he also got another method. And what is that? Ahma mawaw sema that he heats up his instruments. Yes, doctor sometimes, doctor sometimes treats you nicely by offering you tablets and ointments and creams and lotions or something like that to address your wound. And it is very soothing and it is very, you know, you feel nice after that treatment. But sometimes ointment does not work. Tablet does not work. In those days, those physicians used to use their instruments hot like fire and they used to place that burning red instrument on the top of wound to burn the infection. Okay, those days that was the way of doing it. Now, similarizing or symbol symbolicism is there. Imam Ali said, sometimes Prophet has to do that. It's a painful operation. It's a painful operation, but it is necessary. It is out of concern. It is out of sincerity. It is out of his own sense of helping you out and reaching you out. So what he said, who set ready his ointments, and heated his instruments. He uses them whenever the need arises. Well, for what? Let me just read it and conclude. The need arises for curing blind hearts. 
الله اكبر physician cures our blind eyes prophet cures our blind hearts deaf ears deaf ears which ears the ears which can listen can hear but do not accept an effect of that listening and dumb tongues he followed with his medicines the spots of negligence and places of perplexity allahu akbar that's how he treats that's how he reaches out to his patients that's how he offers his solution to the humanity which is so sick which is so much in disease he came and he treated that most ill sick society of arab of arabian peninsula and took them from where to where from what a low level to what a highest of the levels but again in our last juma of rabi ul awwal and rabi ul maulud we reflect that is those ointments and surgical <laughs> procedures which prophet did to fix our ailments are they losing their effect or we are becoming so used to these things that don't want to accept the effect of those you know treatments of the prophet and in which direction we are moving awsikum ibadallah wa nafsi bi taqwa allah wa asuman allah wa iyyakum bi taqwa wa jala al akhirata khairan lana wa lakum fa inna khair al hadith wa ablagh mu'jizat al muttaqin kitab allah al aziz al hakim bismillah ar rahman ar rahim wa al asr inna al insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu as salihat wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bis sabr الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون وجعله رحمه للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فقد غوى اوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله الذي ينفع بطاعته من عطاه والذي يضر بمعصيته من عصاه الذي اليه معادكم وعليه حسابكم فان التقوى وصيه الله فيكم وفي الذين من قبلكم قال الله عز وجل ولقد وصينا الذين اوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم واياكم ان اتقوا الله وان تكفروا فان لله ما في السماوات وما في الارض وكان الله غنيا حميدا ان تفعوا بموعظه الله والزموا كتابه فانه ابلغ الموعظه وخير الامور في المعاد عاقبه ولقد اتخذ الله الهجه فلا يهلك من هلك الا ان بينت ولا يحيى من حيا الا ان بينت وقد بلغ رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله الذي ارسل به فالزموا وصيته وما ترك فيكم من بعده من الثقلين كتاب الله واهل بيته كتاب الله واهل بيته الذين لا يدل من تمسك بهما 
ولا يهتدي من تركهما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على محمد عبدك ورسولك سيد المرسلين وامام المتقين ورسول رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم على علي امير المؤمنين ووسيع رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبع العظيم وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة النساء العالمين وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة وصل على آئمة المسلمين وهداة المؤمنين وحماة المستزفين علي بن الحسين زين العابدين ومحمد بن علي باقر العلوم وجعفر بن محمد الصادق وموسى بن جعفر الكاظم وعلي بن موسى الرضا ومحمد بن علي الجواد وعلي بن محمد الهادي والحسن بن علي الاسكري والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وعمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم افتح له فتحا يسيرا وانصره نصرا عزيزا اللهم اذهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخالق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله وتذل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى تاعتك والقادة في سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما حملتنا من الحق فعرفنا وما قصرنا أنه فعلمنا أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله Once again, I remind myself and all of you who are present here for taqwa of Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quickly, few very important points to reflect in the current uh, uh, issues. Of course, we passed uh, very important uh, milestone in our country of democracy and, you know, and that was, of course, the local elections on the 1st of November. We as a religious leaders and moral voice participated as commissioners to observe moral code of conduct by IEC, by political parties, and by the people. And we were given opportunity to visit various polling stations and different mechanisms involved in these elections to take place. And can very confidently say that really IEC or Independent Electoral Commission done a, a very good, a very honest job and very confidently we can say that elections were free and fair. Political parties also, at least when it came to code of conduct, till great extent, if not 100%, followed that. And whatever we, of course, could manage to witness or observe across the province. Another important, very important point to reflect regarding these elections was extremely low turnout of the people. Now, without going in statistics, this is very important point really to reflect, to think about it. This is very clear message. This is itself a message from the people to the political leadership that we do not have confidence in you. We do not believe in your empty promises. We do not think that our vote can change the unfortunate situation of corruption, of incapable management administration of our country's matters even on the local municipality and council levels. 
This is a clear message. And this message goes to, of course, to the party in power more than anybody else, but also it goes to wide spectrum of political parties. Because this vote of no confidence is, of course, is vote of no confidence to the leading party, African National Congress, but also it is indirectly showing lack of confidence in other parties also. Because the, if there was a great hope in other parties, if there was a concrete, you know, future which people could see in opposition parties, they could have come in big numbers and voted them. Even that did not happen. This is really something very serious. Huh? And I hope that our political leadership realizes that this trend is a very dangerous trend. And this continuous, uh, their journey, non-stopping, does not matter who is the president, who comes, which fraction of, you know, governing party comes in power and goes, Corruption continues, misadministration continues, lack of delivery of services continues. That is a reality in our society. That is very clear message. And I hope they will listen, they will be able to hear. And you know, what was very indicative of the reality that of course we went uh, in for the observation to the uh, townships, so-called, uh, in other words, the poorer areas or people with much more problems and challenges in their life. And we find, we found much more lack of interest in election or voting. Amazing. They were the one who used to make long queues. There were no queues. More queues were in affluent and leafy suburbs. Uh, but I don't know, that's another aspect. Uh, another thing which is exposed is this identity politics where people now don't, some people at least, don't want to look at the country as a country, but rather to their own, you know, small ethnic grouping. I don't know as uh, this group or that group or I don't know. I don't want to know, say, because that itself is a very problematic. This identity politics, you know. But the people who are suffering the most, no, they were not interested. They have lost confidence. And that is really very, very serious and very important point to think about it. And I hope our political leadership speaks about it, takes note of it. Anyway, but still we hope and we pray and make dua that may Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take our country, our society out of this challenging situation, of course. COVID-19 has made things much more worse than what it was already. And we pray and we make dua for our people, for our country, for our land, and especially for those who are the most vulnerable, inshallah. Also, quickly, I need to draw your attention to another important international scenario and where we find that a Lebanese minister in Lebanon, Christian also in fact, in his interview before he became even minister, said that War in Yemen is aggression and it has not achieved anything other than killing of the people, destruction of the infrastructure and suffering of the people. And this statement of this Christian minister in Lebanon before even he became, you know, minister, became source of such a big conflict that a huge number of Arab governments 
called their ambassadors from Lebanon and cut their ties and relationships with Lebanon. You know, really, if American president even calls you a cow, you don't feel even ashamed of yourself, and in fact, you bow down even more in front of them. And when they make of you, fun of you, and pass as comments on you, you don't even think of your dignity. And here, somebody, Arab minister, gives his own understanding of your crimes in Yemen, you became so serious. Huh? Israelis doing whatever they do and whatever they want to call Arabs and regard them subhumans and not human beings deserving to be killed and wiped out. No, very proudly you establish a relationship with them. And there, this is the scenario. Also, another incident very interesting in this week was, quickly to draw your attention, was in Persian Gulf, where Americans, this so-called superpower, tried to, in fact, they did capture a Iranian oil tanker and transferred all the oil from that tanker to another oil tanker and captured that. And when this was happening, Iranian forces, revolutionary guards reacted. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, through their operation, they defeated this theft of Americans in the Persian Gulf. And they could manage to remove them from that tanker and bring the tanker into Iranian waters to the Iranian port. Salawat ala Muhammad wa This is one incident, but it shows something more deeper, that for Americans, it's not that easy what they claim, whatever they want to do, they can do. All the time they threaten that we will attack Islamic Republic and we will destroy, I don't know, your nuclear installations and this and that. They should learn their lesson that they could not they were busy stealing Iranian oil. They captured, they kidnapped basically that whole oil tanker. They moved oil from that tanker to another tanker, to another ship. And they wanted to take away, and at that time, Iranian forces, Alhamdulillah, and revolutionary guards acted upon and could not do it and brought back to their own port. Clear message that you're not in this world Everybody, whatever you want to do, can do it. Huh? No, that is not acceptable and it's not any more possible. Afghanistan is in front of you, what you have done there, and how with humiliation and disaster you came out and left people in such a big mess. Awsikum ibadallah wa nafsi bi taqwa wa asuman Allah wa iyyakum bi taqwa وجعل الآخرة خير لنا ولكم فإن خير الحديث وأبلغ معجزة المتقين كتاب الله العزيز الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر.